This is the hunting locust. It's dead. This is an example of when file killed the tree. Other normally does not happen. But when you get a pack rat nest in there, it generates so much heat, the cambium level, complete everything is killed out. And it does not regrow. So you can put a pack rat nest in all your honey locusts in the trees, and you can get rid of your honey locusts out there. <laughs> That's the only one. Yeah, yeah. Trees have developed strategies to avoid fire. <coughs> this is protected no matter what. These suckers uh, are not going to uh, get killed by fire, whether it has a pack right next to it or not. <coughs> Okay, so let's look at 4B. You will be familiar with 4B later on. We started out 4B of 8% woody cover of three woody species. We burned this on, even though it's supposed to be burned every four years, the uh, average has uh, been nine burns in uh, 30 years. So it's been burned on average, it's low over three, every three years. So every three years, we started out with three species at eight percent last year, ten species at over eighty percent woody cover. Infrequent burning, infrequent being every three years, it's not enough. Now I guarantee you, there's no cedars. Every three years is enough to keep out the cedars, but it's not enough to do anything to any of the other any of the other woody species. So what happens is this is another, this is 4A. So it's been burned every four years. So they had four years of litter build up on the ground. A fire comes through, it burns everything. This is about three weeks after it was burned. And you can see where the fire went through these islands and where there was no grass to carry them, fire didn't go through the island. And so what happens is you, you kill top kill on the edges of these islands, and all that does is stimulate, instead of there was one stem coming up, and now the next year comes two or three stems of dogwood that, that sprouts up. And so these islands keep growing in time. And then what happens is you get like cedar trees in the middle of these islands, and they are completely protected from fire. So even though it's burned at every three years, you can have cedar trees in there because it, fire will never get up to the middle of those islands. So this is a, another example of every four years. Bottom line being that infrequent fire is not enough to keep out the woodies anymore. Used to be, used to be the standard recommendation burn every two or three years at least to keep the woodies out. Nowadays you burn every three years, you increase the woodies once they're established. So, bottom line is, on the walls of Throckmorton Hall, my name is painted on the walls <coughs> in graffiti. <laughs> because this, this is blasphemy. This is exactly opposite of everything that's been taught, not only through extension, but through all the classwork for the last 40 years. And so, uh, there's a reluctance for uh, people on the other side of the uh, campus to, to take this information seriously because they were taught that, that all this plot data, the un unreplicated small plot upland prairie is the gold standard in which what happens with money. And running at different times of the year compared with money. And anything that is counted as that is to be discounted. And I was told 30 some years ago, I was told by supposed experts in the field, everything we know about running, we know. We, we already know everything that we need to know. And based totally upon this, the oldest part study. So that's the mindset that we're dealing with now. And that mindset has become culturally ingrained throughout the clinic completely. So it's going to take a while to change this. And, and that's going to come up 
gradually over time because no matter what, they still say, don't run until late <coughs> You're going to have suffer severe consequences if you do. But we've said that's probably fear mongering or anything else. I've got a 20 minute section. You want to go? How long did it go? I said, I haven't even went an hour yet. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not even asking. I'm not asking for information. I'm going to go. Okay. I want to switch gears a little bit, talk about summer, summer burning, because it's kind of cool. Uh, K State, in fact, nobody has done any summer burning research, basically. And we set up summer burning back in 1994 at the same time we set up the other bug studies. We couldn't burn summer burns every year. You've got to have a mulch layer in order to, to uh, uh, carry a summer fire. And you can't have it if you're going to burn it off every year. And so we set up our, uh, we set up our summer burning to burn every two years. And uh, and so uh, what we did the same same concept. We took two watersheds and and looked at plant species composition and biomass, flowering stems, and uh, both uplands and lowlands. Now, unfortunately, when you do research in prairie, you have accidents happen. And we had a wildfire that came. Not anything to, to my fault, it came off the interstate. And it burned both of our summer burn watersheds in 1996. So I threw out 96 data and 97 data because neither one of them had any direct effect on whether that watershed was in the summer burn or not. But anyway, let's look at some of the summer burn stuff. Traditionally, they'd always said don't burn summer burn. And you don't think about it being a part of a management type of scheme because you say, well, I've got animals out there. If I put it in the summer, what the heck are the animals going to do? So we'll, we'll, we'll look at it. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is compare the amount of grass the next year. So if you did a summer bud, then went through the next year and clipped it at the end of the season, and then compare that with the, the clipped black grass and the spring bird watershed just to see how much difference in grass production we would have uh, lost from summer burning. And on the uplands, we lose about 25% grass production if you did summer burning. Or you lose about 30% grass production on the lowlands. So you do not get the regrowth the next year. It gets set back. Do lose grass production. But you say, well, is that necessarily bad? Something compensates for it, and that's poor production. 187% higher poor production the next year. In the summer burn on, uh, on uplands and big one on lowlands. And this is, remember, this is spring burn. This would be, if it had been fall, winter burn would be about like a. Is that because the grasses are set back, so the forks are taking advantage of the grasses, chilling out? It's a combination of stuff. We'll get into some of that. I think. I think. If I don't, if I don't get into it, uh, I ignore you at the end. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, species switches. Started out same species switches, uh, and after 19 years, 61 percent higher. Now, the more species in a uh, summer burn watershed than in the spring burn watershed. So you get a tremendous flush of species in the summer burn that's not in the spring burn. So what are those species? Most of them are forks. Annual forks, so this is just from what it was last year. Uh, so the total richness last year on the uplands was 76, and the spring burn was 47. And most of that came from annual forks. So 11 annual forks for the summer burn, 2 in the spring, 37 perennial forks versus 30, and on the lowlands, 13 versus 5, and 38 versus 25. And in all the other categories, there's generally more number of species in the summer burn area than in the spring burn area. So it all totals to be a big time difference in the total number of species. So if your interest is, Maximizing the number of species, some of burning is something to think about. So you're telling Burl where to go and look for plants, right? 
Absolutely. Except don't get my thoughts. <laughs> you know a K two A burned that one August X or wildfire. Yeah, yeah. Well, the next year there was unbelievable silky ash, your aromatics blew that up in that area. Just I show you. Actually, I can't show you blue. I can't uh, show you silky, and I can't show you smooth blue. But I'll show you the other two ashes. <coughs> they love some of them. Yeah, they went wild that year, and this explains why. Okay, let's look at big blue stem. The, the spring gun we've already seen. You don't remember it, but we've already seen it. Uh, so this is just to kind of give you an idea of what the summer burn has done with big blue stem over time. It failed with the spring burn. Big blue stem increases. If you remember, it increased in the fall and winter in spring burning. Bottom line is, big blue stem likes burning at any time of year. It increases in the burning at any time. Any grass. Remember, any grass really loves spring burning. It just chopped along and gradually increased with summer burning. It was not a negative effect. Now, keep these in mind because I'm going to come back to these. This is important. One, the dominant one season grasses. Uh, no blue stem, no change over time in spring burning, and just a very small increase over time in summer. Switchgrass. Now this is really cool. I'll talk about it a little bit. Increase over time in the fall and winter burning and spring. No change in time in summer. I'll talk about that a little bit. I can't tell you all the mechanisms why, but I'm talking only about me. Hey, you didn't have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can spice it up a little bit more. <laughs> she works. <laughs> Everybody else going to sleep. <laughs> uh, sedges. Sedges like summer burning. Remember they like fall and winter burning too. Increase and it's only under spring burning and sedges decline. Thank you, bluegrass. Uh, basically it declines, <coughs> hangs around. It fluctuates from year to year, depending on whether it's the year of the burn or the year after the burn. So extremely low levels in spring burning. He passed up. And the blank here is because this is the two years I threw out. And I, I didn't run a trend on it because it, the, there is no trend, it just widely fluctuates. But like in the, uh, the other watersheds, he passed a crash in one line. And but here it, uh, last year it was really showing a strong comeback. It, it crashed for like three years. Yeah. And I don't know why uh, we did wild speculation that that's all it is. Uh, Kentucky, uh, Western ragweeds, wide fluctuation year to year, but in the heck of a lot of years, higher uh, Western ragweed <coughs> in the spring bottom watershed in the summer. But ragweed is dependent upon cyclic fluctuations on the precipitation pattern. Woody species, standard is you burn in the summer, you knock out your woodies, get a hotter bar. Number of woody species did not change. You look at the cover, the woody species, and this was going to real gradual decline in spring burning and wild fluctuations from year to year, but basically no change in woody species cover. 